Hi all, Dr. Clark here, and for this video, we're really going to talk about an introduction to gen bio general biology as a course. Okay? So if you're watching this video because you're just interested in general biology as a subject, you're not taking a course, hey, you can probably skip over this video unless you're interested in you know learning ways to study for material um, learning how to take notes how to succeed in other courses I mean it might pertain to you but this really is geared for students who are taking general biology online through me or another instructor and you're trying to kind of get a leg up on the course or competition or find ways at which you can succeed uh, in that course. All right, so let's kind of dive into it. So this is an introduction and ways to succeed in the course. First, the required material for the course. All right? You need Dr. Tatiana's Sex Advice to All Creation by Olivia Judson. This is what I call a reader. Okay? And that you'll have quizzes over this, um, weekly quizzes, one chapter per week. You'll see uh, in the task list on Canvas, you'll see how that works uh, when you're in the course. Okay? The other one piece is the lab manual that I wrote for the course. Okay? Um, you'll need that, and that coincides exactly with my YouTube channel, where it says, you know, biology, general biology labs. Okay, and I go through this entire lab manual, I demo out the labs, and you'll need that information to succeed in the lab portion of the course. Okay? The final one is you need a textbook of general biology. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go out and buy Johnson's Living World, 9th edition, or any edition. You don't even have to buy a Johnson book. You can just get a textbook, a general biology textbook. And it's recommended that you have a general biology textbook. I'm not requiring a general biology textbook, but it's recommended that you have one. The reason for that is you need what I call a reference guide. So if I say something in lecture and you're confused, you need another way to get that information. You can re-watch my lecture video, but it's still going to be me saying the same information. And if you're still confused, you need a way to look up that information. Best way to do that is a biology textbook. Sure, you can Google it, okay? and you can find a lot of good information on the internet, but you can also find a lot of information that's not complete on the internet, or it might be slanted in one direction or another direction, and it might, it might be just even more confusing to Google it or go to the internet and search it out than it would be for you to just open a textbook. Okay? You can get really cheap textbooks. I mean, heck, you might even be able to get a free biology textbook. There are free biology textbooks online. Right? You can just search free biology textbooks and you can get a PDF of an entire textbook. Now, the problem with those often is a lot of times they have fewer examples they don't have very good diagrams. Now, I'm not speaking for all of them, but they have not as good diagrams, not as good of photographs, and um, often they're written, written at a very low budget because those individuals who write that, they're just writing the information down and they're giving it away for free. The reason why these textbooks cost so much information so much money, especially in the new ones, is because the photographs are, are amazing. The diagrams are high quality. A lot of times there's more examples. A lot of times there's practice quizzes or practice questions and things like that. So you're getting a little more from, you know, a published textbook versus a textbook that's, you know, published online for free, open source kind of stuff. Okay? But regardless, get yourself a book okay and that goes for any course if you're watching this and you know you're not taking a gym bio course but you're watching get yourself a textbook a reference material and use that when you're confused or when you have questions or 
Maybe when you just want to learn more information about a subject, use that material. All right. So with my courses and really with life in general, there are two things that I think you should do when you're trying to get information and take that information and convert it into knowledge. Okay? There are two things that I really think are highly important. The first one is take notes. How you take notes is up to you. Okay? Um, students sometimes come to me and they're like, well, you know, I really don't know how to take notes. Well, the only way you're going to learn how to take notes is by doing it. I can't tell you how I take notes and have that work for you. Right? It's the same thing as students will say, hey, I don't know how to study for an exam. Well, I can tell you how I would study for the exam, but that doesn't mean it's going to work for you because everybody's a little bit different. Right? And note taking, it's the same deal. You know, I don't take very many notes. I only take down things that are, you know, I find extremely important. So I might watch an entire lecture and I literally might only write down 10 things because that's just the way my brain works. Those 10 things would, you know, trigger me to remember the lecture basically word for word. That's, that's just how my brain works. For other people, they need to write every single word down, including the commas and the hyphens and everything like that. And then they need to memorize that material in order to get anything out of those notes. If that's you, that's why you can pause YouTube videos. And that's why you can put the closed captions on and you can look at the wording and everything like that. You can just go through it. Okay? But there's a couple things about taking notes. I highly suggest that you take notes on everything that's presented to you. The lectures that are on YouTube, take notes on them. The reading that you need to do for the course, the required reading and the optional reading, take notes on it. The videos that are required for you to watch, okay, um, take notes on them. The labs, so whether it's a virtual lab or you're sitting in my class and I'm writing on the board, take notes on it. Okay? That's how you're going to take information and go from just gaining a ton of information and applying it, okay? So you're transferring it from information to knowledge, and I'll go through this in a second, okay? So that's the first piece. Now, some of you will take it the old-fashioned way, pen, paper, pencil, paper, okay? Some of you, digital world, okay? Type up your notes, okay? Some of you, maybe you'll record them voice-wise and then transcribe them. I don't care how you do it. Take notes the way it works for you. If you can type really fast, Type them. If you have to write it out and then retype it in, go for it. Okay. Again, this is, you know, individually based. Second piece, participate. Okay. Participation is key. I mean, it truly is key to doing anything well. Okay. Participate in the lectures. If there's material in the lectures you find extremely informative take that material and go further with it okay? look up more information if i just skimmed over the top of something and you're like you know what that's awesome that is so cool i need to find more find it that's participation labs same thing or maybe you don't understand the material question it ask questions send me an email give me a phone call give me a text find out the information to your questions as soon as possible. Okay? Don't sit on it and then, you know, down the road when it's test time, say, uh, I, I had questions about that. I didn't understand that section. Well, it's too late now. Your your exam's tomorrow or it's the day that you're emailing me. Like, I don't understand the whole photosynthesis concept. What don't, what don't you understand? You got to be specific. Okay. If you don't understand the term photosynthesis, look it up. If you don't understand certain processes within photosynthesis, okay, let's go through those processes. Let's get, you know, that's participation. Right? It's just like, you know, when you were a kid and maybe you were in different activities, maybe you were in sports, maybe you're in band, maybe you're in choir, you know, 
all these different activities, ballet, those kind of things. Maybe you were in these different activities, okay? and maybe you didn't get to participate to the fullest. Maybe you sat on the bench. Maybe you didn't get the leading role. Maybe you're just a backup singer to, you know, the lead singer, okay? or anything like that. If you're not participating at 100%, I ensure you, you're not getting 100% out of it. Okay? And this really goes for anything in your life. If you're, you know, just going to give it, you know, give it 25%, well, that's probably what you're going to get out of it is 25%. Okay? You give it all, you give it 100%, okay? and you're invested, you're probably going to get a lot more out of it. Okay? You're going to also enjoy it a lot more. Okay? I look back on you know my childhood and I say, well, okay, what sports did I sit the bench in? What sports, you know, or what activities were you know did I not have a lead in? Okay, I, you know, music. Okay? I played an instrument, and I look back at it and I hate that instrument now, and I hate band now. <clears throat> The reason why is because I didn't give it my all. Okay? I only practiced maybe two, three times a week. Okay? And even at that, I didn't practice very hard. And I wasn't trying out for the lead for that instrument. And, you know, even when I did, it was like, oh, everybody else was better. And I look at them and I'm like, oh, you're really good. Well, they're good because they practiced and I didn't. I didn't participate. I didn't sink it in. Okay. Now I look back on it and I'm like, man, I hated that. Okay? I don't want you to think of that when you think of biology. I don't want you to hate biology. I want you to love biology. I want you to look at it and say, you know what? Biology is the study of life. I'm alive. Everything's alive that I care about. Okay? And I want to know things about those living things. I want to know how they work. I want to know how they evolve. I want to know what's going to happen to them as time progresses. That, you know, will kind of give you that spark to take that to your next course or take that to your career or whatever it might be. Okay. So it doesn't really just have to do with, you know, being this kid and, hey, man, I got the answer. Hey, that's great, too. Okay. I, I like that enthusiasm. Okay. It can be at a different point. You don't even have to ask a single question in an entire class. But if I say something interesting in, in, a, in a lecture and you say, well, you know what? I'm going to look up scientific information on that. I'm going to, you know, read about that because I'm interested in it. That's still participation. Okay? It's not just about who can ask the most questions. Okay, That's not the role of participating. Participating is a lot more than just asking questions. Okay? It's being involved in the course. All right, so I always kind of give this little statement, and most of you probably heard pieces of this statement before, and I do this because there will be times in general biology that I will tell you things in gen bio that You'll be like, what? Um, I, that's not what grandma told me. That's not what my parents say. That's not what my next door neighbor, that's not what my high school teacher said. Okay. Look, I will give you the truth. Okay. I will give it to you based on facts, based on seven, scientific evidence. I will give you the truth. And the old saying is the truth will set you free. And, you know, I got to give a little caveat to that. But first, it may piss you off. Okay? I'll provide you the information based on scientific facts. And it might go against what you've been taught before. It might go against your political beliefs, your religious beliefs. It might go against what your previous instructor said. Okay? Now, I can guarantee you this, if you find a mistake, if you think that I'm mistaken, please show me the scientific evidence that says I'm wrong. Okay? 
Don't show me the political evidence that says I'm wrong. Now, remember, this is not a political course. This is not a religious course. This is not your mom and dad talking to you when you're five years old at the zoo telling you that zebras only eat this. Okay, This is not that kind of course. This course is based on scientific evidence that pertains to this period of time. That doesn't mean it won't change in the future. It doesn't mean that we know everything. Okay, but I'm going to present to you what we know. Okay? Scientific evidence for certain subject material. We go through lots of subject materials. If you find scientific evidence that suggests something different, please present it to me. Okay? I'll evaluate it. And if it's true, I will make a video that you know changes my scientific view. Okay? I don't know all the science, okay? but I know a lot about biology. I keep up on scientific evidence as much as possible so I can present things to you and other you know, people across the world that is up to date. It's not, I'm not presenting you material from the 1960s. Now, some of it's from the 1960s because it hasn't changed, but I'm presenting you material from today, and you'll see that a lot of those videos reflect that. So, the truth will set you free, but first it might piss you off. What's the next thing? Okay. Let's talk about procrastination and involvement in a course. Okay. So, the average American is 15 pounds overweight. Okay. Scientific evidence suggests average American, 15 pounds overweight. So, hypothetically, let's say that you want to take a trip. Maybe it's not December. Okay. I just have December there. It doesn't matter when you want to take a trip. Maybe you want for spring break okay, in March. Maybe you want to take a trip to Hawaii. Okay. And before you go, because you want that beach bod, you want to lose 15 pounds. Okay. Well, there's a lot of evidence that suggests, well, there are ways to do this, okay? There are ways that you can lose 15 pounds. First of all, you could starve yourself. I don't suggest that. Um, or you can work out and you can burn more energy than you take in. That will make you lose weight, okay? There is no one, no one in their right mind that would suggest, okay, that if you burn more calories than you take in, that you're not going to lose weight. Okay? That's the purpose of weight. Weight is fat. Okay? And if you burn more calories than you take in, then you have to get that energy from somewhere. And that would be fat. Okay? Now, if you don't have any fat, that would be muscle. And I don't suggest that. Okay? So again, you want to lose 15 pounds. So what can you do? Well, for the three months prior to your vacation, you could work out every day for, you know, 30 minutes a day, whatever it takes. Okay. Now this will be depend on where you're starting. Okay. How many calories are you taking in a day? Okay. You know, how much overweight are you? Are you just like just 15 pounds or are you 50 pounds overweight? Okay. Where do you start? Okay. Will determine what you got to do. Okay, but let's say you work out every day for three months. Yeah, 15 pounds. You'll lose 15 pounds. Okay, let's say you work out three times a week for three months. Okay? Well, now you're putting less effort in, so you might be getting less out. Okay, let's say you procrastinate and say, wow, we got 30 days before we're going on this vacation. I better start working out. Okay. Well, now maybe instead of getting to that 15 pound mark, maybe you get that five pound mark. Okay. Studying is the exact same process. It's the exact same component. You want to earn an A in your gen bio class? Study every day. Okay. Put the work in study every day, learn the material. Okay? If you can't study every day, 
because you have other obligations and and you or you don't want to um, because Netflix or whatever is more important than studying. Hey, I, I'm not the one who's taking this course. It's up to you. Okay, and you only want to study three times a week. Okay, well, then odds are that you're not going to get to that A mark. Okay, now. This is not equivalent, okay? I'm not saying if you study every day for three months, you're going to earn an A. Again, this has to go back to where are you starting? How are you starting off? Maybe this is your first science class that you've ever had to learn anything from. Your high school science classes, maybe you just had to sit there. And when they gave you a worksheet, all you had to do is open the book up, write the answers in, gave the worksheet back. Maybe your exams were open book. All you had to do is look the material. You actually didn't learn anything. Okay? That's just regurgitating information. Okay? Anyone can do that. Anyone, a monkey can do that. And we know that. Okay? A computer could pass that. And they don't have to learn anything. All they have to do is regurgitate information. You didn't learn anything. You're just taking information and transferring it from one spot to another spot. Okay? That's not learning. Okay? That's not obtaining knowledge. That's why you take courses is to obtain knowledge, not to obtain information. Information can be obtained by Googling it. Okay? There's your information. Okay? What you do with the information is, is what's important. Can you transfer that into knowledge and carry that with you to your next course, to your career? Okay? Some of you might need to start at a lower level. Or you might be starting at a lower level and you might have to do that every day for three months to earn a B. Okay. Some of you might be starting at, hey, I took AP biology in class. My instructor was awesome. I didn't study for the AP exam and I didn't do that well on it, but I learned a lot. Okay. So maybe the day before each quiz and exam gets you an A. I'm not asking you where you start, because okay, I don't know that, okay? but it's the same thing as working out. Maybe you're a super athlete and you just didn't work out for, you know, six months and you let your body go and you're 15 pounds overweight and you're like, oh, I can get back into this. Boom. And you get back in, you work out a month before you go and you lose the 15 pounds in one month. Okay, by eating right and working out every day really hard and you drop 15 pounds in one month. Okay, I'm not saying that you can't do that. Okay? But overall, this is what I've found. Students that study more often, every day, okay, they put the time in, they often get a better grade than students that are only studying a couple times a week okay, or students that are studying right before exams. All right, let's move over to another piece of studying. It's not all about how much you study. It's also how you study. Okay? Are you studying by watching TV, listening to music, studying with your friends? You got Facebook on your phone and you're, oh, hey, Sally said this. I better answer that. Oh, wait, um, photosynthesis. Oh, um, Sally wants to go to a movie. Yeah, give me another 15 minutes of studying cellular respiration and, and, and then we can go to a movie. That's not studying. Okay? That's pretending to study. Okay? Now, for some people, it works. Okay? I'm not saying that some people can't cram a session in or study with music in the background, TV, whatever. Okay? But for the majority of people that want to go from information to knowledge, it doesn't work. Okay? It doesn't work. Okay? Now, at this level, general biology, it might work. Okay? It might work for you. But as you progress okay, and you really need to learn that information like the back of your hand and you need to be able to apply that information, specifically apply that information from a knowledge base to many different situations. So you're going to be a nurse, a doctor, a wildlife biologist, whatever it might be, and you're using that information in your career, 
studying that information or learning that information, watching TV or music or you know talking to your friends, Facebook, whatever, it's not going to work. Okay? So these cram sessions, you know, late at night, right before the exam, okay, and you're just cramming it all in as much as you can. Right? Um, there's really good scientific evidence that that is not how you develop knowledge. It works if all questions are based on information. If you get to an exam and all you need to do is regurgitate information that's provided to you, and you don't have to make that connection between information and, and make it into knowledge, cram sessions work great. Okay? If it's just memorizing facts, cram sessions work great. Okay? But if it's more than that, which this course is, you'll see my exam questions are not regurgitate facts. Okay? You're going to see it doesn't work. Okay? You have to put the time in. You have to connect the dots. Okay? You have to evaluate different situations, same concept, different situations, in order to do that. So again, the goal from a professor's point of view, from my point of view, now this goal has changed. It really changed with the invention of the internet. Before the internet was invented, right, information was key to things like general biology courses, especially the introductory. We just want to give you as much information as we can during those you know, during the 80s, 70s, 60s, 50s, on and on and on before the internet, just give you as much information as you can because that's where you're going to get the information. Sure, there was books, but book was a lot harder for you to just say, I want to know about cellular respiration and this piece of it. You had to read through a lot of that, find it, okay, re, you know, turn it around, find examples of it. Now the internet is super fast. You know, okay, type in. What do you want to know? Okay, boom, pops up. Information's at your fingertips. You can get all the information in this class you can find on your phone. Okay, You can find it all on the internet. If you search enough, you can find it all on the internet. At least 99.9% .9 of it on the internet. So the information is already there for you. And I'm going to provide you information. But that's not, as a professor of in today's society, that's not what I want from you. I want you to take that information because your information is at your fingertips. And I want you to apply it to knowledge. Yeah, you have the information. You have the facts. But what can you do with those? Can the situation change and you can still apply that information to a new situation, a new uh, a new example, a different type of question, these kind of things, that's knowledge. Applying the information is knowledge. That's where we as instructors in today's society are trying to get the students okay, to that knowledge level. Okay. Then from the knowledge level, the more often you practice that knowledge, the more often you apply that knowledge, either through teaching or, or work, et cetera, okay, then it starts to become wisdom. And what wisdom is, is it's not just applying information. It's altering it, connecting dots from outside of your realm. You're a wildlife biologist, but you connect dots to chemistry or physics okay, or math or theater, or English, or whatever it is. You're connecting dots because now you're, you're taking your knowledge and you're applying it to a much greater spectrum. Okay? And that's kind of how wisdom goes. So if you drew it out, information is like one dot to the next dot to the next dot to the next dot. And there's very few connections. Knowledge is connecting the dots. Maybe you make a simple shape. Wisdom is you're making a three-dimensional apparatus, and then you're slamming other dimensions on it. Maybe other three-dimensional 
objects getting stuck on it. And the more wisdom you have, the bigger the picture, the bigger the mosaic is with knowledge and sure some information because you're not going to be knowledgeable in all aspects of life. So sure, stuck to your wisdom might be some little dots that go off that are based on just information you have. Right? And as you take that information and you reform it, you rework it, and you understand it more, now you got lines connected to it. Then you take that knowledge, now you got bins and you got angles and other things that are connecting all that together. And now you're wise to whatever the subject material might be. That's the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal in life for everyone should be wisdom. You should be wise in something. Right? And the more wise you are in more different fields, um, the better you'll be, okay? R really. I mean, the better you'll be in life is, you know, wisdom, okay? And, and nothing really, no one can really take that away from you. As you build it, no one can really take it away from you. Now, diseases and, and other things can, and age can take that away from you, but no one can really take that away from you. And that's one of the great, greatest things about being human is this platform, going from information to knowledge to wisdom. Uh, I mean, it's amazing. Okay? Yes, other creatures can do it, but not to the degree that we can. Okay? All right. Procrastination. Okay, let's go through some procrastination uh, types of procrastination. Now, again, I'm going through these. I, I'm not calling people lazy. I'm not calling people idiots. I'm not calling people dumb, okay? I'm just saying the act of this type of procrastination, it's labeled that, okay? There's lots of textbooks out there. There's lots of material that's been written on that. And <clears throat> these are the typical labels that that event or that type of procrastination gets labeled, okay? There are many types of procrastinators. Okay? Procrastinators that are excellent students, okay? Procrastinators that are not excellent students. Okay? So maybe you're a perfectionist okay? and you won't start studying for the exam until you know exactly what's on the exam. Well, I'm never going to tell you what's exactly on the exam. Life doesn't tell you what exactly is going to happen to you during your job. Why would I tell you exactly what's to, what to study for? Okay? The great thing about taking information and making that knowledge is that you don't know how you're going to have to apply that. And that's the best part about it. That's what shows me that you're knowledgeable is you took the information and you took it and you tweaked it to make it knowledge. And now it doesn't matter what I throw at you, what kind of wrenches or anything like that I throw at you. You can tweak it and just, oh, okay, got it. I know that concept. I know that concept. No matter how you twist it, okay, you can turn it upside down, you can twist it 360, 180, 90, 270, it doesn't matter. I got it, okay? Perfectionists, get over it. You're not going to know exactly what to study for the exam because if I tell you exactly what to study, all you're going to do is take information and try to regurgitate information on the exam. You're not going to build knowledge. You're going to memorize material to regurgitate that's not how it works the hopper okay i see this a lot individuals that you know their friends write note cards so i'm gonna make note cards another friend rewrites all their notes okay so i'm gonna not write note cards and now i'm gonna rewrite all my notes oh i'm gonna ask the professor what's gonna be on the exam oh i might well wait for my friends and what they got okay don't don't do that. That's procrastination. Okay? Do what works for you. Who cares what your friends are doing? Who cares what other people in the class are doing? If it works for you, do it and do it well. Okay? Procrastinators called idiots. Okay? This is the idiot. Okay? And I get this a lot and I'm not calling you an idiot. The act is idiotic. Okay? And that's individuals that say, hey, I don't know how to study. You never told me how to study. Okay. You just spent 18 years of your life, 
okay, roughly 18 year, years of your life in school. You're telling me that you didn't study? In 18 years, you didn't study one time? If that's the case, okay, maybe you need to have a conversation with your high school teachers, your middle school teachers, etc., and let them know, look, man, you, you did me wrong. I didn't have to study one time. Okay? And I'm not saying it's high school, middle school, elementary school teachers that should be teaching you how to study. You should be teaching yourself how to study. Okay? Of course, you've probably memorized some facts in your life. Okay? And you moved them, those facts to knowledge. Maybe you're a sports junkie. And so you know who the quarterback was of... You know, the Steelers, when they won the Super Bowl in the 70s, maybe maybe they didn't win in the 70s. It's just an example, okay? I don't really know, okay? But maybe you know who that was, okay? And at first, that was just facts that you memorized. But now, maybe you progressed it and you, and you moved it to knowledge because now you know, actually, how does that individual compare to today's quarterback? How does that individual compare... Okay, to someone else. Now, so now you're not just memorizing facts about an individual, but you're making connections. Okay, and it doesn't have to be football. Okay, I just use it as an example. Okay, you've done it before. Do it. Okay? You're procrastinating because you don't want to do it because studying can be hard. Lazy. Same thing as an idiot. Basically, I never studied before. You know, other things are more important. Netflix social media, whatever it might be, my job, okay? Look, if your job's more important than school, you're not ready for school. They should be equally important. If you're working 40 hours a week, there's a lot of hours still left in that week to concentrate on your other job, which is this course and other courses that you're taking, okay? It's just the way it is, okay? I don't like that excuse. Hey, okay? Um, I have, I have a job to do. Yeah. Okay. You chose to take the class. I'm not going to give you answers or give you, you know, an easy class because you got a job and this other individual that's sitting next to you in class decided to take out student loans instead of working. Okay? Or you have children. Okay. But you made the decision to take the class. Okay. So, yes, I understand. Everyone's busy. Some people are more busy than others. That, if you're more busy than others, that gives you even more of a reason to not follow or fall into one of these procrastination events. Okay. All right. I'm not going to go through the rest of them. You can read them there. You can pause the video. Check it out. Just pl please don't procrastinate. I mean... The thing about this course is you're going to have to put the time in. You're going to have to study. People will often ask me, how much should I study for this? Well, first of all, how much do you need to study for this? Okay. Second, I can ensure you that if I lecture okay, for an hour each lecturing period, and you're supposed to watch four in a week or a half hour each, and you're supposed to watch four in a week, so that's two hours of lecture material that I give you every week, and you're not studying that lecture material for at least two hours, you're probably not studying enough, okay? The rule of thumb that often professors told me when I was younger and, and taking classes was three hours outside of class for every inside the class material, okay? So if I do two hours a week of lecture, you should be doing six hours outside of the class of studying for that material. That doesn't count the lab, which is also another hour, okay? So maybe it's nine hours. And it doesn't count that, what if this really is your first time taking a science class that's worth anything? Then maybe it's not nine. Maybe it's taking you 12 hours a week of study time. Okay? But maybe you're really great. You love biology. You already know a lot of this material. Okay? 
So maybe you can cut that down and, and you're just doing a one for one. Okay? Two hours of lecture, two hours of study. Okay, that's up to you. Okay? But one of the key components is just study. Okay? Don't procrastinate. Don't make excuses. Just study. The more you study, the better you'll be. And the next class, you'll even be better at it. All right, three ways to succeed. Okay, watch the lectures. Okay, I cannot stress this enough. I lecture for you. I made videos for you to get the information. Watch the lectures. Okay? Utilize that information. Take notes on those lectures. Okay? Read the books. Okay? You have to get the information somehow. Watch the lectures, read the books. Somehow you got to get the information. Here, I'm going to show you something. Okay? This, this will show you that I'm not tracking individuals, but watch this. Okay? This is my YouTube channel. This is a video that I put up, okay? this video right here, it's called Population Ecology. Okay? And I put that up uh, September 21st, 2019. Last semester, it was published. Okay? Now, look at that. I just pulled it to today, okay? I think, yeah, I just pulled it today. It has had... 14 views. Well, last semester, I had 42 students. It's got 14 views. Not even half the class watched required lecture material. So how else did they get the material? Did they read the book? If they did, great. Okay. Awesome. You read the book. Some probably did. Some don't like the lecture videos because maybe they think I'm boring. Huh? All right. But watch time. Here's the next one. I can look at the watch time. Hey, this video is 44 minutes long and the total watch time is 5.3 hours. 14 views. It should be pretty close to 14 hours. Okay, like 12 and a half hours. It's not even half of that. So yes, people are watching the videos. A few, okay, in this case, they click on it. They speed it up, write the information in, okay? But they're not getting the other information. The slides are not all the information you should know. Watch the videos. It's just like sitting in a lecture with a professor who's lecturing to you live. Not only would you probably not show up and then tune out the instructor for 20 or half the, the amount of time, 25 minutes, 30 minutes of the lecture, or you wouldn't start it and say, uh, I got other things to do and walk out. Okay, That's rude, first of all. Now, I don't care how you do this. The other component of this Here's the kicker, okay? 40 some odd students, 14 views. I don't know. This could have been three students that viewed it multiple times. They could have watched it for the first 44 minutes, the three students, that's three hours. And then they could have each went back or so and watched a couple minutes because they were like, oh, I don't remember what he was saying about this piece of the population ecology. Okay? Watch the videos. That's, I mean, that is key. Watch the videos. Second piece, take notes. I've already told you. Take notes, and then when you've taken notes, take more notes. Okay? So not just write down the missing pieces, okay? but also write down the examples. I go off on very long tangents sometimes that are pretty important, and I can guarantee you if I'm giving you a very long example, probably going to get a question on your exam because I don't like to talk for fun. Review your notes. Study the notes. Now, you've got your information by watching the lectures and reading the books. 
Now you've taken notes. Right? Now you're studying the notes, so you're starting to learn that information. The final piece is you need to apply that information and start to build knowledge. Okay? So make practice exams. Study with classmates. Do the quizzes. Review the quizzes. Make more practice exams. Do more practice exams. Review your answers. Teach someone the material. Ask questions. So maybe you got family members at home. Teach your kids. Okay. Ask questions. You're when you're doing this, you're applying that information. You're building connections. You're connecting the dots of the information to start to build that knowledge up. Okay. Once you're to that point and you've built the knowledge, then you're ready. You're ready to take exams. Okay. And you'll do very well in this course if you can do that. Watch lectures, read the books, take notes, learn the information from your notes, then start applying it to different concepts. Okay, and when I say make practice exams, it's not what is the definition of photosynthesis 2? You're never going to see that question on an exam. It's not applied. That's regurgitation. Okay? All right. So with that, uh, that kind of ends the nuts and bolts kind of lecture of how to succeed in classes. This is not just gen bio. This should be your approach at any class. Actually, this should be your approach at any information. You want to learn how to weld? First, you got to get the information. You got to read the information or watch the information. Somehow you got to get the information. Then before you even spark the welder up, okay, you should probably review that information. Then practice. And the more times you practice, the better you'll be. It makes no difference what we're talking about. Learning how to drive, learning how to weld, learning how to, you know, bake, learning how to do biology makes no difference. You have to practice. Okay? And you have to learn the information first so you can practice it, so you can apply it. All right. Watch the lectures. Okay? Ask questions. Uh, that's what I'm here for. Please. Okay? Ways to succeed in life. You know, these, these really are important. Okay? So take it. With a grain of salt, if you like, or take it as, look, this is going to help me succeed in all my courses. Take this approach. All right, till next time.